Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back, folks. In this presentation, we're going to discuss quick actuating and quick opening closures as defined by ASME. So our presentation is broken into three parts. First of all, we're going to talk about the types of closures that ASME describes. Secondly, we're going to talk about the piping codes that ASME use, in particular, the most uh, commonly used B313 for process piping and B31.8 for, for pipelines. And the third part, we're going to get into discussions of the ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Section 8, more specifically into Division 1. The definition of an, a closure by ASME is a pressure containing component used to blank off an opening nozzle on a vessel or pipe. Now we're going to talk about closures and the different categories or groupings that ASME uses. First group is called heads, conical, flat, ellipsoidal, spherical heads are some very common examples and the diagram is shown below and uh, we're referencing in this example section 8 division 1 UG32 and uh, if you check out our library we have some great design videos for heads and uh, have a look at it and take and um, you might find them useful and the next one is uh, bolted blind flanges the most common being a weld neck and uh, we've borrowed this from section 8 division 1 as a nice you know diagram sort of showing a typical weld neck next one is a cap and we refer to this in uh, ASME B16 Point nine and MSS SP75. Next, we have thread bolt plugs and end plugs. And at last, um, the boiler pressure vessel code, ASME Section 8 Division 1, they break out closures into two types of categories, a quick actuating, which is found in uh, UG352, and then the quick opening one is in point 0.3. And, and then it also mentions um, documentation is about those type of closures is, is found in Appendix FF. Common applications. Common applications for quick opening and closures are pick traps, filters, strainers, scrubbers, and heat exchangers. The piping codes and how they define quick opening closures. First of all, they say it by definition it's a pressure containing component. Second part is it's used for repeated access to the interior of a piping system. And the this coincidental design pressure and temperature must be greater than the piping pressure and temperature design. And uh, safety locking devices are required, CUG35B. And uh, there must be weld end preparation, ASME B313, Appendix I, Figure 14. ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Closures. And uh, Section 8 Division 1, UG35.2 and UG35.3. Secondly, the, the second part is the Division 2. You can find it depending on which edition you look at. It's Section 4.8. The Quick Actuating and Closure section called UG 35.2. 
and uh, in particular part A, the definitions. And this is what it says. It says that this type of closure is operated by the action that releases all the holding elements. And then it defines the holding elements. It's the holding elements are pins or bolts. Then it goes on and it says locking elements. Locking elements are defined as what prevents, is, prevents the release of, of the pressure. So in part B, general, we have locking components uh, must be engaged before pressurization. Then they say failure of a single element will not cause opening or leakage. Secondly, the allowable stress cannot exceed 50% in this design. And going back to that 50%, it's, it, that's really to reduce the chance of, of fatigue. Uh, visual indication of, uh, of the closure condition. So you must be able to see if there's any kind of damage uh, you know, in the assembly, there should be nothing that prevents someone from inspecting that, that uh, closure. And uh, visual indication, if it's fully engaged, is also a requirement. Another rule is there must be some kind of pressure indication. And for example, that would be like a pressure gauge on the assembly is required. And uh, multi-link components are not permitted, by the way. It, it chains, that's not something that a, a quick enclosure, a closure is not, a, um, is not um, permitted. And uh, a partial ASME data report is required for this type of uh, design. And uh, in Appendix FF, there's lots of um, instructions about, you know, operating procedures and all that that are required and conditions that are required to, to design a quick and actuating closure. And what's interesting is, is um, you know, ASME can't create, you know, every, every type of design in the universe, and it, it recognizes that, and so it, it tries to give the designer some fundamental type of rules to follow. Specific requirements. It must be also, it must be held in position with positive locking devices. Secondly, the release by rotation or limited movement is a required feature in the design. It locks in the full position prior to the pressurization. The pressure can be released prior to opening. Part C, specific requirements. So mandatory appendix two is not a requirement for this design. Secondly, one must consider cyclic and other loadings as defined in UG22. Second, one must consider the wear on the components as a function of the design, and they must be designed with safeguards to prevent, you know, circumventing safeguards and preventing of negligence that, you know, uh, circumventing safeguards, basically. And if uh, clamps are used, then mandatory appendix 24 is required. This is UG35-2, alternate designs. So this is what it says about the alternate designs. If opens under pressure, then it must leak first. Leakage it must be directed away from the operator. The third element is it needs not follow the specific Part C requirements described in the previous slides, but requires an audible or visible warning into UG 35.3 definitions. 
So a quick opening enclosure is not a bolted flange joint as described in UG 44A 1.6 and mandatory appendix 2. It's not a quick actuating enclosure as described in UG 35.2. It's not a multiple swing bolt type of design, and it's exempt from Appendix 24. So we have holding elements are parts of the enclosure used to hold the vessel closure, provide the force required to seal the vessel. They can be hinge pins or bolts. In this part B, B general, which is similar to part uh, part two, there's a uh, some elements here. I, I put it in green so that you can see that UG the similarities between UG 35.2 and 35.3. So when it's in green, it means that they're the same statements. So failure of a single element will not cause opening or leakage, just like in part two and the allowable stress must be limited to 50%. Um, what they're saying is visual indication of, a, of the enclosure must be uh, available to the operator to make sure that there's no damage, right? And uh, the pressure release devices can be, you know, a vent valve, a threaded plug, for example. Uh, the, there's alternatives uh, rules for safety environment. Uh, that are required in case you have a hazardous material and the, the pressure of devices are required are not required if there are other ways to reduce the pressure to zero prior to opening so this this is an exception if if this is um, containing you know pot potentially dangerous um, uh, you know product that is can be harmful to the uh, operator like the other one, you need to have a partial data report is required and uh, refer to Appendix FF. C, specific requirements. Mandatory Appendix 2 may not be applicable. C, 2-1E. And uh, you must consider the cyclic loading and other loadings. No surprise, very sim similar statements to the previous section. And uh, must consider where and all the components, very same as last time. And they must have a, an, an, uh, you know, an, an um, operating and maintenance manual, an installation operating maintenance manual, and it must follow the guidelines of uh, non-mandatory appendix 24. Some more thoughts about quick actuating and quick opening closures. Uh, particular the clamp designs that were discussed about earlier there's an author by the name of Moss and he has a t an interesting table about closures and different types of closures even and uh, his comments about them is if clamp closure designs are typically used for connections greater than 12 inches in diameter he says that closures are often that are temperature limited by the gasket material. And that's something to, to uh, keep an eye on. And uh, these parts all require a lot of machining and critical machining, very precise, and there's a lot of parts. So therefore these things can be quite expensive and uh, it's something to keep in mind. PTB-4 2013 has a specific example of uh, quick actuating and quick opening closures. And there's an example 4.8.1. I didn't find it particularly helpful, but it's available uh, for further study.
I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.